Welcome to the ZB Play How To. In this how to, we're going to explain what Play Mode is in the modeler. Play Mode is a ZB powered playground environment for validating a process in any stage of development. So, developers can debug their process logic, testers can manually test the process, and process owners can demote to stakeholders as well. So, you could see this as a way more advanced version of the token simulator. As of this recording, Play is an alpha feature, so you will need to opt in for alpha features for this to work. Okay, so where do we find play mode? Just need to click the play tab up here at the top, and now it's loading. So what's happening now? When we initiate play mode, the current version of the process and all its dependencies, like called processes or DMN files, are automatically deployed to the play environment. Just make sure that these are in the same folder as your process model. So during this phase right now, we're creating a temporary cluster that will be used just for this process, and it will delete automatically after a period of inactivity. Okay, once it's ready, you'll just have to click here to start a new process instance. If there's an error deploying the diagram, you will have a red button here where you can view the error. So if something like a uh, DMN file was missing or you didn't configure your event correctly, something like that, you'll be able to see that here fix those issues, and then try again. Okay, so here's the entire process we'll be using. The top path will demonstrate how tasks work in play, while the bottom half has some event examples we can look at. So let's just focus on the top path for now. So here we have a user task, a script task, a business rule task, and further down the line is a service task, and they'll each work a bit differently. So we haven't started the process just yet. We can do that here at this blue button. Typically, there will be a blue button for most steps in your process. This will execute the primary action of the step without additional configuration. If, however, we click the three dots, we have some additional configuration options. So in this case, we can start the process instance with some default data. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the process is now running. Notice that the business rule task executed automatically. This is because it simply executed the DMN table that's associated with this task that's included in the project. Same for the script task. It'll run whatever script you have configured in the task. So if you hadn't already noticed, you can see that this view is much like the UI for operate. We can see which steps are performed in the bottom left and have our process data in the bottom right. In this case, we can see our results from the script task and the business rule task. So now for the user task, we can either complete it via a form or complete it with variables. So in this case, we're just going to complete the form that's attached to it. So we just have a form that looks at our process variable that we started with in the beginning. So I'm just going to complete that here. And now we're at the service task. So you will need to complete these manually. The service task has options for completing it with or without variables, or additionally, it can throw a failure or error. In this case, we'll just complete it here. And now the process is completed. All right, so we've covered tasks. Now let's take a look and see how it works for events. So for events, it's fairly intuitive and not too dissimilar from completing tasks. You can either complete the event immediately via the blue button, or we can complete it using additional options. So let's go ahead and start the bottom part of the process via a message. So the first event here is a timer event. Uh, for these, you simply need to click the blue button to trigger the event, and the process will move on from there. Next, we have a message event. I'll go ahead and simulate the message being received without adding any details in this case. So the message is now published. Notice the red mark here. This is called an incident, and this happens whenever there is an issue with the process execution. So this will halt the process and allow us to view the issue and resolve it. So in this case, we're missing a process variable that's needed for the XOR gateway in the next step. So we would be able to resolve this by simply adding the process variable. Generally, that's how you will resolve these. You'll add the missing data, click Resolve Incident, and Play will redo the step over again with your new changes. I'm not going to resolve it here. Rather, I'm going to use the rewind functionality and mimic receiving this variable from the message from before instead. So you'll see these rewind buttons appear as your process progresses. And whenever you click on one, the process will revert back to that step in the past. So let's go ahead and add the missing process variable here. So now we're back at our service task again. Let's simulate the use of a boundary event. 
So since we have an error event here, we can throw an error from this task. I'm just gonna click here, go to throw error. And here I just need to put the matching error code. And additionally, we can put an error message here. Okay, I'm gonna click fail. And notice that the event was caught. Now we've completed the process. If you'd also like to take a look at the processes that were triggered prior, you can easily go back to the previous process executions by clicking view all here at the top. So now at the bottom, you can see all the previous process executions on the bottom left. All right, so that about covers it. Play mode can be an extremely useful tool for demoing your processes to others and for general testing. Would definitely encourage you to give it a try. So I hope you've enjoyed this how-to. We'll see you next time.